Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 23 of the course Applied Seismology for Engineers. In earlier two lectures, which were also related to critical state identification followed by steady state of the soil in terms of deformation, which is primarily related to large axial strain as far as the initiation of low liquefaction and subsequently other loading condition was related. Accordingly, in lecture 21, we discussed that independent of the initial state of the soil, taking different stress paths, one dense soil is there, one very loose soil is there, will undergo finally to same state of deformation that is called as critical state of deformation. And corresponding to that, we developed the critical void ratio line in terms of E log sigma c or E versus logarithmic of confining pressure uh, line. Then later on we identified that despite based on critical void ratio line, one can identify a particular soil medium that the, whether it is susceptible to liquefaction or it is not susceptible to liquefaction. Many of the samples from the sites which based on critical void ratio line were identified as non-liquefiable but in actual site condition had actually undergone liquefaction. So, with that input in lecture 22, we discussed about another parameter, another state of the soil rather, which is called as steady state of soil, which is more uh, realistic as far as uh, the process of initiation of liquefaction primarily in terms of flow of the material is concerned. As a part of lecture 22, we discussed how to come up with the steady state line, primarily taking into account the stress control behavior of three types of sample. One was very loose sample, which initially had undergone to peak value, uh, uh, peak uh, stresses, increase in the stresses or peak strength had reached at very low value of axial strain. After that, the sample had undergone collapse and then subjected to reduction in the stresses and the same was continued to very large value of axial strain. This was primarily related to very loose sample. As the samples were very loose, so if, if we recall whatever has been discussed in earlier class that is lecture 22, so we tried understanding in terms of mean confining pressure and mean effective stress. The three behaviors which were prominently visible were dilation which was related to very dense specimen of the soil medium. Remember all these behaviors we are discussing are related to stress control test. When we were discussing about critical void ratio line, those were related to uh, strain control test. So, this is corresponding to uh, here actually we are able to uh, understand the nature of change in excess pore pressure and subse subjected to also taking into account how uh, the behavior is varying as far as low strain value is con uh, concerned or as far as high strain values are concerned. As a result of which when we uh, perform these tests, we got, so one was related to dilation behavior which was primarily related to dense specimen. We can see initially the sample was subjected to very, uh, I mean initially there was gaining in terms of positive pore water pressure. That means subsequently the rate at which the effective stress was supposed to decrease, it, it initially started increasing. Subsequently there was reduction in excess pore pressure followed by a negative pore pressure development. So, we can see the rate at which the effective stress was increasing subsequently reduced. Then we had also in terms of very loose specimen initially had shown contractive behavior followed by which there was, so this was peak value followed by which there was collapse and then as a part of reduction in the confining pressure where also we can see in this particular portion there is increase in the pore water pressure. So, because of this there is reduction in the confining pressure or effective stress as a result the sample uh, uh, was subjected to collapse followed by this there was flow nature 
that means the, the, the physical characteristics of the sample was resembling the loss of confinement and subjected to deformation which is again uh, classical uh, nature of very large deformation or very large strain. So, this collapse followed by steady state corresponding deformation that continued for large value of strain. So, this is corresponding to very loose specimen and in between dense specimen and very loose specimen there was mixed characteristics of uh, dense specimen as well as characteristics of very loose specimen which was shown by intermediate sample or samples corresponding to intermediate densities. So, intermediate density samples were there which were showing initially the uh, characteristics of peak uh, uh, stresses followed by which there was even strain softening was there. So, that was corresponding to uh, 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 intermediate uh, samples. So, this loose samples that can also identified as liquefiable and then there were samples which were identified as non liquefiable. And remember these were based on stress control test. So, not uh, non liquefiable. Again if we see the same based on, so this is uh, epsilon a, we can see the sample was subjected to reduction in the confinement and this particular nature continued to very large value of axial strain. Same thing if you are seeing on P prime that is effective confining pressure versus mean uh, uh, effective stress. So, here we can see the sample is going up to this was the state which was identified as steady state of the soil. Steady state of soil that means samples considering the initial stage of the soil which was identified over here also if we continue with this particular part, if the samples are there which are corresponding to initial state. So, dilation will again go to increase in confining pressure and then so this is related to dilation and remember the steady state line which has been identified over here on E log P curve or E log sigma C curve this is parallel to critical void ratio line, but it will be lower than critical void ratio line. Again if you are talking about limited liquefaction, so as I mentioned there will be phase transformation in limited liquefaction or the samples which are corresponding to phase transformation. So, this is corresponding to phase transformation and then there were samples which were corresponding to very loose soil. So, those directly continued if we go over here those continue directly to collapse and that continued for very large value of axial strain. So, this is corresponding to very loose specimen So, we were able to identify firstly the steady state of the soil where even the samples which had undergone liquefaction, but as for critical void ratio line were falling within the boundary of non liquefiable soil now based on steady state of the soil which is uh, helping us understanding how in terms of the change in the state of the soil how the sample with respect to the initial state whether it is subjected to uh, strain softening whether there will be peak value if we remember here with respect to critical void ratio line there was con continuous there was contactive behavior, but in this particular case when we are discussing about uh, stress control test there is continuous initially at very low value of effective uh, axial strain the sample has reached to peak value after that sample has undergone collapse and followed by which this behavior continued for very large value of axial strain. So, accordingly the steady state of deformation has been identified. Now, here this is related to how the initiation of liquefaction happens in a particular site. That means, at a particular site there is some soil sample corresponding to what is the value of effective stress there, how much is the confinement available to the sample, one can get an idea about what is the initial state of the soil. 
Now, in addition to this particular state of the soil, there will be additional loads which are coming onto the sample, which can be because of maybe pile driving activities, it can be because of explosion, it can be because of other man made activities, it can be because of earthquake, it can be because of mining activities which can again proven to be a source of vibrations or additional loading. Collectively based on this, there will be a additional stresses which are coming onto the sample. So, sample which was initially subjected to some state of stress by virtue of its position, now will be subjected to additional stresses which are coming from all the activities listed over here. As a result, there might be a state developed in the sample where the sample, the, the in situ strength of the sample will be, exp, will be exceeded by the stresses which are generated because of following sources of vibration. There can be many sources of vibration. As a result, what will happen? The sample will be subjected to loss of strength. Subsequently, there will be increase in pore water pressure which we can see over here in terms of very loose specimen also, there is increase in pore water pressure which can be also identified as reduction in the effective confining uh, effective stress. So, whenever we are interested to find out whether a particular site sample is susceptible to liquefaction or not, based on steady state line we can find out. But what is the nature in which the sample will reach from initial state of the soil to steady state deformation? that will be described by means of understanding what triggered or what initiate the liquefaction in a particular sample and that can be identified by means of stress path. So, stress path will give an indication about how the state of the soil is changing with respect to initial state where it was more or less stable, whenever it is subjected to maybe monotonic loading or subjected to any kind of dynamic loading. So, we will be discussing. So, so it is like though the soil is susceptible to liquefaction, but considering the failure which has happened in actual site condition, one has to also understand whether the favorable condition in terms of external loading has been actually reached at a particular site such that a particular liquefaction can be triggered at a particular site. So, we can say based on this understanding, we can say the state in which. So, uh, if we look into uh, the strength, the in situ stresses, uh, in situ strength of the soil available at a particular site and the stresses which are going to be mobilized in the soil sample by virtue of external loading condition that will give fair idea about what sort of phenomena is going to get triggered in, or in terms of liquefaction. So, if we see about liquefaction, there will be comparison of two parameters. One is how much is the external loading condition that means, the stresses which are mobilized in the sample which is primarily in uh, uh, available at a particular site and how much is the in situ strength of soil undergone liquefaction or soil in its liquefiable position. So, based on that uh, the phenomena of liquefaction can further be bifurcated into two uh, further nomenclature that is flow liquefaction the phenomena. So, how the liquefaction is actually being initiated at a particular site between the initial state of the soil and reaching to steady state which is the final uh, position in a which a particular sample will reach. So, flow liquefaction and cyclic mobility. Now, if we look into flow liquefaction, the definition says it generally occurs when the shear stress is required for static equilibrium. So, there is a sample and minimum shear stresses which will be requiring by means of confining pressure such that the sample can retain in its original position or in its in, in situ stresses state. So, shear stresses which are actually required for static equilibrium of a sample are actually higher than the in situ shear strength of the soil in its liquefied state. So, there is a soil which has uh, undergone into liquid st uh, liquefied state and at that particular moment the stresses which are coming from external loading condition, it can be because of uh, earthquake loading, it can be because of construction activity, because of explosion, because of any other anthropogenic activities. 
So, those are generating a state of uh, stresses which are higher than the in situ shear strength of liquefied soil. In such a case, what will happen? There will be loss of confinement because uh, there will be failure in the material because the stresses are much higher than how much is the strength of liquefied soil available at a particular site. And this process will be re resulted in larger deformation. So, there will be a soil sample which will try to come into equilibrium, stresses which are required for static equilibrium will be much higher than the in situ shear strength of the soil sample of liquefied site. So, what will happen? The sample will try to come to equilibrium, but how much stresses will be applicable on that particular sample that will be much higher than its in situ strength. Sample will collapse, again there will be larger deformation because it is primarily related to some phenomena which is uh, uh, prominent on larger axial strains and the process will continue that means deformation will continue till the state of stresses which are actually applicable on the sample becomes lesser than the in situ strength of the sample or we can say whatever build up of pore water pressure is there corresponding to which there is a building up of in situ stresses. So, all those excess pore pressure which was developed because of external loading condition has actually dissipated as a result what will happen? The effective stresses, uh, the state will reach where the in situ strength characteristics will be more than the stresses which are uh, applicable on the soil sample. So, that such a state where uh, the in situ stresses are more than the in situ strength of liquefied soil, such a state is called as flow liquefaction. The phenomena is called as flow liquefaction. On the other hand, Another uh, uh, phenomena is there which is again related to liquefaction that is cyclic mobility. So, cyclic mobility is defined as when the static shear stress is required for equilibrium of the sample, it is actually lesser than the in situ strength of the soil sample. So, in this particular case primarily what we will come across is loss of the confinement. So, static shear stress is less than the shear strength of the liquefied soil. So, in first case there was sample which once uh, at moment when it is subjected to higher stresses in comparison to how much strength is available at uh, steady state of deformation certainly the sample will be subjected to deformation followed by uh, and the process will continue that is called as flow liquefaction and another process which is called as cyclic mobility where the in situ strength of the soil sample is higher but because of loss of confinement again the sample will be subjected to liquefaction. So, uh, cyclic mobility it can be triggered both it firstly related to permanent deformation large permanent deformation and uh, it can be triggered both during cyclic loading as well as during monotonic loading also. Okay. So, uh, if uh, in order to discuss further about uh, flow liquefaction and cyclic mobility one thing is very clear that despite with respect to the initial state of the soil whether the soil will undergo liquefaction will undergo that means we are talking about soil which are you can say is like potentially liquefiable soil potentially liquefiable so, soils have been identified as potentially liquefiable, but what is the stress condition, what is the external loading condition which will uh, set up a state where the stresses in its in situ condition are much higher than the in situ shear strength of liquefied soil. So, soil will undergo liquefaction or not or not will be decided. by external loading. So, soil though it is capable to undergo liquefaction, but whether in uh, its in situ condition it will undergo or not that will also be decided by the characteristics of external loading condition. So, hence, hence in addition to 
to steady state line knowledge about stress path about stress path which the sample will take or which the soil will take is equally important is equally important here. So, it is important both for flow liquefaction as well as for cyclic mobility. So, we have discussed so what, what we are trying to say here is if we look into E log sigma c that is confining pressure and if you remember this is a locus of uh, void ratio at steady state of uh, soil as a function of confining pressure because as we keep on changing the confining pressure for stress control test at every time the soil is reaching to steady state there will be corresponding uh, uh, void ratio that is you can mention it also as ESS. So, this is a plot which we are getting this is corresponding to steady state line and corresponding to this this is liquefiable liquefiable and this is non liquefiable so whether the soil will undergo or not it also depends upon the stress path it is equally important or the nature of loading As I mentioned nature of loading means this will also help the stress path, stress path will also help in understanding the triggering mechanism where it is actually triggering triggering mechanism of initiation of primarily flow liquefaction initiation of flow liquefaction now as i mentioned this can be done during monotonic loading including in natural soil deposits man made fills etc. So, it can be done in all these similarly it can also be triggered during non seismic events such as blasting pile driving so each of these cases whether you are talking about blasting you are talking about uh, pile driving these are generating favorable conditions which can uh, result in development of excess pore pressure. So, higher onward we will be primarily discussing about loose specimen which are potential to undergo liquefaction. So, development of excess pore pressure. Excess pore pressure. So, we will be interested to find out important is how the initiation of liquefaction, initiation of liquefaction, how this has been initiated with respect to with respect to initial state of the soil, initial initial state of the soil. So, that actually is the objective here which 
actually led to triggering or initiation of liquefaction. So, that is already mentioned, we can, we can avoid it. Now, flow liquefaction as I mentioned, it is related to identification of the state, where considering the initial state of the soil and in situ strength of liquefied side, uh, uh, soil, how much is the stresses which are actually applicable on a particular soil sample. So, in order to understand primarily related to monotonic loading condition, what one can do, again we are discussing about flow liquefaction, flow liquefaction. So, what is the condition here is stresses required for equilibrium for equilibrium are much higher than shear strength of soil in its liquefied state. Shear strength of soil in liquefied state, liquefied state. Now, in order to understand the initiation of flow liquefaction in terms of stress path, primarily as I mentioned it can be done during monotonic loading or cyclic loading and even during seismic loading more specifically. Cyclic loading we can have other characteristics of loading as well. So, seismic loading also. So, flow liquefaction situation or the favorable condition where the state of stress can be higher than the in situ strength of liquefied soil. This particular condition can be met need not be every time related to cyclic loading or seismic loading, but even during monotonic loading condition. So, let us discuss about in order to understand about monotonic condition, monotonic loading condition and keeping the initiation of to understand the initiation of of flow liquefaction condition. Flow liquefaction condition. So, initiation of flow liquefaction condition. So, if we are interested to find out that one can understand, one can understand the response of response of loose now if we if we uh, recall loose sample means loose sandy sample saturated samples remember because we will be talking about liquefaction which is mostly the development of excess pore pressure subjected to subjected to undrained stress control test. So, we are discussing about stress control test which is uh, uh, one can correlate with respect to steady state of the soil. So, we can uh, at this stage at least we should be able to distinguish between uh, the critical state of the soil as well as the steady state of the soil which is which is more related with respect to the uh, stress control test. So, we are uh, in order to understand how the initiation of liquefaction or how the initiation of flow liquefaction take place in very loose specimen. We can write maybe again very loose because this is the terminology we have been using with respect to steady state of the soil. So, there is one uh, very loose sample of sandy soil which is saturated also and is subjected to monotonic loading and it is uh, yeah. So, it is undrained condition. So, all these condition that means there is because the sample is loose and we have seen that when loose samples are there subjected to external loading condition in stress control test, initially there was contactive behavior, it will reach to the peak followed by which the sample will be, this was the nature the sample will be. So, this is peak corresponding to very low value of strain, very low axial strain. 
this one is q value this is epsilon a value. So, this is corresponding to very low sample which we have seen when we were discussing about steady state of deformation. So, very loose specimen and uh, when we say about specimen again we are discussing about sandy specimen because that is more specific related to initiation of uh, liquefaction is concerned. Now, here so strain control triaxial test. So, triaxial tests are there which are uh, stress control triaxial tests are there and uh, the condition is these are uh, undrained condition and sample is very loose specimen. So, what we have understood prior to prior to undrained uh, shearing which actually has to start from this particular side the sample might be having some state of the soil which is uh, indication of its initial state in a particular uh, site condition. So, we can see over here. So, let me uh, draw it here to, to get an idea about. So, what will happen uh, in terms of q versus epsilon a which is shown over here also representing that the undrained shearing in the sample for stress control test has actually started taking into account some initial state of the soil in which the sample was there or we can say because there was some initial, initial state of the soil at which the sample was uh, more or less in equilibrium that is why the site was selected for a particular construction activity. So, when uh, we started this particular thing it is uh, corresponding to some drain equilibrium which is corresponding to some initial state of the soil came into existence primarily at point A because of external loading condition static condition and corresponding to this there was some value of effective stress and they will not be shear stresses because now we will start applying shear stress in the sample. And accordingly once we start uh, loading the sample whether it is because of any external loading condition which, which is going to trigger liquefaction. So, there will be now there will be development of pore water pressure. Again we remember that we are talking about very loose specimen very loose specimen. So, very loose specimen means we are talking about samples which are well above well above steady state line. So, if you remember the steady state of line that is basically demarcating uh, the samples which are not susceptible to liquefaction and which are susceptible to liquefaction. So, all the samples which are which can be plotted based on the initial state. Uh, below the steady state line that we call it as not susceptible to liquefaction and which are plotted above those are susceptible to liquefaction. So, those will be subjected to peak uh, stresses at low strain followed by collapse and that will continue to reduction in the confinement development in the excess pore pressure. Finally, that will turn the consistency of the sample to almost liquid form. So, uh, so this is the initial state of the soil is suggesting that such samples can be located well above the initial state of the uh, well above the steady state line. Again if you remember if we start loading this particular sample there will be reduction in the effective stresses there will be development in the excess pore pressure because we are talking about undrained condition. So, there will be reduction in the effective stress condition, but there will not be any change in the void ratio condition. So, again in this particular sample which is point A is corresponding to the initial state of the soil when shearing happens in this particular sample initially there will be contractive behavior followed by which. So, because this is contractive behavior corresponding to very low value of axial strain we can say very low axial strain axial strain because that is what plotted on x axis very low axial strain and corresponding to which it reached to another state which is we can define it as peak value. So, you started loading the sample very loose sample subjected to strain stress control test. The sample was initially uh, uh, started to be load corresponding to whatever was the state of the soil in its in situ condition started loading the sample it shows uh, contractive behavior reaching to the peak value that is point B and followed by which there will be collapse. So, this happens at again there will be there will be development of pore water pressure, but that will be relatively low. So, 
So, we can call it as axis pore pressure is relatively low, axis pore pressure at relatively low axial strain. So, epsilon A value will be very low. What will happen after this? If we are able to recollect from lecture 22, the sample will be subjected to collapse followed by which there will be reduction in the confinement. We remember the sample is subjected to collapse, there is development of excess pore pressure. So, we see though in this particular section from A to B, there was uh, contractive behavior, but after point B, there will be development of excess pore pressure. So, we can see over here subjected to which the sample is subjected to very high value of axial strain and this primarily we are correlating with respect to axis pore pressure. So, at this particular point the axis pore pressure is relatively low at point B low axis pore pressure. And after which the sample is undergoing collapse and this will continue till very large value of axial strain. So, this will continue to the very large value of axial strain till the sample reaches to its steady state. So, point C is basically marking the steady state of the soil between point B and point C. So, we can say A is initial state of the soil, initial state of the soil before shearing started. before shearing begins, point B corresponding to peak value at low uh, axial strain followed by which followed by collapse beyond point collapse cannot happen at point B, but just immediately after point B followed by collapse just after B, just after B. Again point C is there which is related to steady state of deformation, state of deformation which will continue, which will be uh, uh, corresponding to very large value of axial strain. very large value of axial strain. Epsilon value is significantly large because the sample has collapsed. So, it was undrained condition remember, but because you are also uh, 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 it is like there is uh, development of axis pore pressure as a result of which the sample is almost uh, become like liquid form. So, specimen has reached the steady state of deformation at point C with effective confining pressure. Now, the sample at point C has reached to steady state with effective confining pressure with effective confining pressure only a small fraction of only a small fraction of its initial values. Its initial value means whatever was the initial value of effective uh, confining pressure, once the sample is reached after collapse to point C, there is almost loss of confinement. The sample has very low value of effective confining stress in comparison to how much stress was there may be corresponding to point number A. So, again if we are uh, trying to develop this with respect to, so again uh, in terms of uh, P prime versus Q plot, in terms of diabetic stress or uh, average confining pressure with respect to P prime, average, uh, uh, average confining pressure and average mean effective stress, uh, mean effective stress. 
So, this is uh, this one we can okay, same plots what we did in earlier uh, the slide we are getting more or less the same thing. So, initially there will be contactive behavior and at the same time here we are also trying to understand the P versus Q plot in terms of understanding the effective stress path. At the same time we are also trying to understand about excess pore pressure which is continuously increasing because it is very loose specimen. So, u excess how much is the excess pore pressure which was generated when this sample is subjected to shearing continuous shearing and in addition how much is the what is the initial uh, what is the change in the confining pressure what ratio is not going to change because again it is uh, uh, under in condition. So, P so this was a sample which actually this was the initial state of the sample it was subjected to shearing reached to a peak value and then after reaching a peak value the sample is subjected to shearing which continued for larger value of. So, you can see this is peak value point B corresponding to peak point C which is corresponding to steady state of deformation or reaching to uh, yeah it is corresponding to steady state of deformation and then at the same time if we are seeing in terms of P Q plot. So, we remember this was steady state of line which was developed with respect to P Q plot which can also be sh shown in terms of E versus sigma c plot sigma 3 or sigma c plot uh, where sigma c is referring to confining pressure. Now, here as I mentioned there will be contactive behavior, but there will be the rate at which the excess pore pressure is generating with respect to initial state point A between initial state of the soil and the peak stresses. So, that rate will be relatively less. So, we can see the rate at which the axial strain is increasing is relatively less, but at the same time there will be development in excess pore pressure between point A and point B. So, this is related to point B you have continuously shared the sample or it is the shearing is going on. So, this is corresponding to point B this is corresponding to point A and after this once the sample is collapsed that means it has almost turned into liquid which is only possible when the excess pore pressure or the pore water pressure which was uh, the, the pore water which was under very high stress uh, pressure so that it can push the soil particles leading to flow condition. So, this is like initiation of this is like flow situation flow situation. So, that means there is significant increase in excess pore pressure. So, we can see that particular part like this significant increase in axial strain because that is what uh, the flow flow means continuous there is flow. So, that means there is significant increase in terms of axial strain this is corresponding to steady state. So, all those same states only in terms of different different x and y axes. So, point A related to initial state point B corresponding to some state which is resembling peak uh, uh, stresses we can say which the soil sample has been exposed to followed by which it was collapsed and reaching to steady state. Now, again this particular point A because it is corresponding to some value of confining pressure resembling how much is the initial state of the sample in its in situ condition this sample when subjected to. So, we can mark over here also this is the so this is the state in which the sample is subjected to. So, this is a state in which basically the sample is subjected to we can see over here Now, here it is three points which are clearly uh, to be understood here point A resembles some value of confining pressure and uh, corresponding to Q value we have taken we have actually started our graph corresponding to 
confining pressure which was there at uh, in its in situ condition. Again the sample was subjected to loading, so there was some reduction in the confining pressure because the rate at which the effective stress is changing is relatively uh, the axial the stress is changing, axial strain changing is relatively low reaching to peak value which is again shown on uh, PQ plot over here. Finally, this is very loose sample. So, this particular loose sample will be subjected to uh, flow collapse. Finally, it will reach to a particular state which is called a steady state of deformation which is marked by SSL line steady state of deformation. Now, here we can see for a particular soil the steady state of the soil is marked by the steady state of deformation is marked by this particular line on PQ plot. Again if we remember the sample is corresponding to very loose soil that means with respect to steady state of line which is also mentioned over here on E sigma C plot the sample will be somewhere above the steady state line and then when it is subjected to loading condition there is significant development of excess uh, pore water pressure resulting in reduction in the confinement which is also can be seen, seen. So, the sample is actually moving from point A left hand side towards point C keeping the void ratio to be constant. So, void ratio is not changing because this is um, undrained condition. So, this was the initial state B and this is point number C with respect to initial state. Now, collectively looking at uh, this particular part what we can see between point uh, B and point C there is collapse larger deformation which is the characteristics of flow. At the same time if we go with plot number B what we can see point C is resembling the steady state in which finally the sample is reached. However, point B is resembling another state corresponding to external loading which is representation of a higher value of stresses much higher than how much is the st stress value available, how much is the NC2 strength corresponding to the steady state of the soil. So, at corresponding to point C there might be some in situ strength of the soil because finally the sample in its liquefied state has reached to uh, steady state, but at point B there is some state of stresses which are significantly higher than point C. Since point B is a re representation of peak value it is quite uh, distinct it is quite clearly identified which is point B whenever uh, uh, this uh, stress control tests are being subjected for very loose specimen. So, with this particular part if we are interested to find out what is the state of stress what we can do related to flow liquefaction that means stress is due to external loading condition required for uh, stress is because required for static equilibrium is more than the strength of liquefied state of the soil again related to Q versus P prime what we have understood there was a sample when it is subjected to external loading condition. So, this was the peak value this is corresponding to initial state and this is corresponding to point C. Now, take as far as flow liquefaction is concerned if I am interested to find out the initiation of flow liquefaction that that means which is the state of stress where confidently one can say maybe this was a favorable condition at which the flow liquefaction was initiated resulted in loss of confinement or the stresses because of external loading condition were significantly higher. So, I am interested to find out the initiation of flow liquefaction. Now, with respect to initial state of the soil here I have taken the initial state of the soil somewhere minimal uh, which is almost touching the Q equals to uh, 0 or uh, there is no diabetic stress. So, point B marks in this particular case point B marks the state in which the sample is reaching to a condition where stress is 
due to external loading are much higher than the strength of the soil. That means, point B for this particular loading condition is basically demarcating the initiation of flow liquefaction, because it is meeting the criteria that the sample has just now subjected to a well identified peak stresses, which is significantly higher than the stresses available corresponding to the steady state. So, initiation of flow liquefaction. So, repeat the same procedure what we have just done, repeat the same procedure by conducting repeat the procedure, the same procedure by conducting a series of a series of triaxial specimen testing a series of triaxial specimens initially consolidated consolidated at same word ratio to same word ratio but at different confining pressure but at different confining pressure so one example is shown over here similarly we can repeat the same thing we'll have what will uh, what we will get each of these samples that means we are repeating the test on very loose specimen each sample is corresponding to same word ratio but uh, to start with it was like corresponding to different value of confining pressure. So, we can say maybe n number of confining pressures are there and considering the sample is related to same type of soil that means the sample will be finally reaching to the same value of critical state uh, steady state that is point number C. So, point number A it uh, sample 1 it reached to point number B related to initiation of uh, flow liquefaction finally, there was collapse and reached to its steady state. Similarly, point number B or maybe we can write it as point number sample number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we can see almost all the samples will be reaching to more or less same state Again in sample B or sample 2 also there was some state where the peak stress is higher, higher than the steady state strength. Same way we can get n number of samples So, if we join all those points which are basically marking the initiation of the state at which the flow liquefaction has just started these are the locus of this point this one, this one, this one same way over here. So, the, all these points which are basically marking the demarcation of flow liquefaction this will come like this like this. So, this particular line which is basically joining the locus of locus of points corresponding to corresponding to initiation of flow liquefaction. initiation of flow liquefaction. So, what finally, we are getting is this particular plot we are getting this particular uh, if you join all those points will give it will give flow liquefaction surface that means, whatever points are there between steady state line and flow liquefaction surface that means, all those points are actually in a state of flow liquefaction or are under continuous flow. So, this is related to flow liquefaction only this particular line flow liquefaction surface or FLS flow liquefaction surface. So, this particular surface is basically indication of like that triggering of flow liquefaction has happened and after that whenever samples are there between steady state because no sample can go beyond steady state. 
So, whatever sample or whatever stress path is located between steady state and flow liquefaction surface, that means all are resembling the initiation of flow liquefaction or, or the state of soil after initiation of flow liquefaction and finally reaching to flow liquefaction surface. Again, if you are interested to find out here in terms of E P prime. So, again over here because this was the initial state of the soil. So, we can see some of the samples which were So, we can see over here may be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is may be 6 sample. So, all these samples as far as sample 1 to 5 are there corresponding to very loose specimen, they will be subjected to loss of uh, confinement, subjected to increase in pore water pressure. Subsequently, they will move towards left hand side to reach the steady state line. Sample 6 which is may be indication of non liquefiable soil which is shown over here that will directly reach to the state of steady state condition without undergoing any kind of initiation of flow liquefaction. So, this particular line which we have mentioned over here, this is basically an indication of flow liquefaction surface. Now, as far as now whenever we are interested to find out flow liquefaction initiation with respect to, so this was again with respect to Q and epsilon A, maybe we can discuss right now with respect to firstly epsilon a and then correspondingly we will also have q versus p prime plot. So, in this particular plot we knew it was corresponding to. Now, here we will be interested to find out the initiation of liquefaction, but we will not take the initial state of the soil corresponding to uh, uh, 0. So, there will be some minimum value of diabetic stress or confinement from which we are actually starting the initial state because we will be interested to find out we, we have just seen with respect to monotonic loading here we will be also discussing with respect to cyclic loading. So, here we see it reached to some state and then followed by which there was continuous deformation. So, this was corresponding to point number C this was corresponding to point number B when the sample is subjected to monotonic loading initiation of flow liquefaction at the same time the sample can be also subjected to cyclic loading. So, the cyclic means there will be to and fro motion. So, this particular to and fro motion subject followed by which the sample has actually reached to very high value of axial strain and then the sample will collapse subjected to very high value of strain. So, more or less the sample will follow the same stress path. So, this is corresponding to cyclic loading. Same thing if we are interested to find out on PQ plot, we have just seen with respect to steady state of uh, the soil. So, this is corresponding to initial state of the soil when the sample was subjected to loading condition. This was the state in which the sample has reached. However, if the sample is subjected to monotonic loading condition, this was the state followed by which the sample has reached to. So, this is corresponding to monotonic condition or monotonic loading and this is corresponding to cyclic loading in both the cases. So, in monotonic loading the sample was subjected to peak stresses because of external loading condition. However, in monotonic cyclic loading condition there the loading itself has subjected to increase in uh, excess pore pressure because this is the nature of loading subjected to which finally, the sample in both cases will be reaching to its steady state of deformation. Again this part uh, if we are able to locate with respect to the critical state of the soil. So, we can actually locate the flow liquefaction surface over here. So, in this particular case this was the point in this particular case this was the point which is also located over here which is basically initiation of initiation of flow liquefaction flow liquefaction in during cyclic loading.
So, this is related to uh, cyclic loading and this is the initiation of flow liquefaction in cyclic loading condition and this particular line is flow liquefaction surface, this particular line is steady state line. Now, as far as flow liquefaction is concerned based on this we can understand when monotonic loading is there, the, when the moment when peak stress is corresponding uh, state reaches we can say the initiation of flow liquefaction has happened. Same way in terms of flow liquefaction, uh, in terms of cyclic uh, loading, there will be reduction in the confinement because external loading condition will cause increase in the pore water pressure. This is the characteristics of seismic waves once reaching to a particular uh, soil medium. Subsequently, there will be reduction in the confinement because of this again in this particular case of cyclic loading, there will be a stage reaching leading to the initiation of flow liquefaction and this will continue in forms of flow till the sample reaches to a steady state of deformation. Now, as far as cyclic mobility is concerned, we can discuss in next slide. So, this is related to cyclic mobility. In cyclic mobility, we can primarily encounter so the sample which may or may not undergo flow liquefaction, but can experience cyclic mobility. So, first case if we see over here this in terms of Q P prime this was steady state of the soil and then this is flow liquefaction surface. So, if you look into this these particular zones which are located here this is potential for potential zone for zone for cyclic mobility. All the sample which are described by means of state of stress in this particular zones, this can undergo cyclic mobility. Three possible combinations, three possible combinations. Again uh, in case of cyclic mobility, the initiation the moment at which cyclic mobility is going to initiate will not be well identified. Still there can be three possibilities. So, one is when the static stress minus cyclic stress that means the amplitude of cyclic stress is still lesser than the amplitude of stati static stress. In such a case there will be no shear stress reversal. There is no reversal in the stresses, even though the sample is subjected to uh, 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 cyclic loading condition. At the same time, tau static plus cyclic, that means in addition to whatever static load were there, both is less than steady state shear strain, that means no exceedance of no exceedance in steady state strength strength. So, in such a case what will happen the sample which was initially over here may, maybe we can mark over here also with respect to Q P prime this was initial state and this was flow liquefaction surface this is initial state of the soil or the steady state of the soil. So, sample in this particular case was taken with respect to initial state. When this sample was subjected to reversal in the stresses, remember the value of tau cyclic plus tau uh, 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 static it is lesser than the, the steady state shear strength. So, it will not touch this particular path, this is stress path. Finally, the sample will reach to a steady state, but it will not touch the flow liquefaction surface. So, this is potential in case of first one. The effective stress path will move towards left till it reaches the uh, steady state uh, condition, but there will not be any reversal of stress, there will not be any initiation of flow liquefaction surface. Similarly, another case can be there where tau static minus tau cyclic is less than is, is still greater than 0. 
So, that means no stress reversal, reversal, but tau static plus tau cyclic is more than now the in situ shear strength, static uh, steady state shear strength. So, what will happen in this particular case? The initial state of the sample was like this, but when it is subjected to cyclic loading, the moment sample reaches to flow liquefaction surface, in addition this particular point will again be called as initiation of flow liquefaction. So, in addition to cyclic mobility where the sample was reaching to steady state, there will be initiation of flow liquefaction in this particular case and the sample will finally reach to its steady state. So, here this will be tau static plus cyclic, cyclic it is still greater than 0. So, there is no reversal of stresses. So, this is P prime, this is Q. Third one is again the tau static minus tau cyclic is now become lesser than 0. That means, the cyclic stresses are basically dominating and tau static plus tau cyclic is greater than tau. In this particular case, in addition to flow liquefaction, there will be reversal of stresses. That means, so here we can say tau static is lesser than tau cyclic. As a result, there is stress reversal. So, sample in addition to reaching to, I mean, so in this particular case, the sample rather than reaching to a flow liquefaction surface, the sample will not reach flow liquefaction surface, but there will be reversal in the stresses and then the sample will reach to steady state of. So, this is again Q value, this is again P prime value. So, potentially three cases can be there with respect to how much is the static stress, how much is the cyclic stress and whether the combination of cyclic plus uh, static stress is leading to stress reversal. That is how the state, but certainly all these uh, cases, three cases which are mentioned over here will be triggered only in the zone which is identified over here, which is uh, below the flow liquefaction surface. So, that is how the cyclic mobility can be understood in terms of ini its initiation. But the point of initiation of cyclic mobility has not been well identified as was in case of flow liquefaction. So, thank you everyone. This was all related to initiation of liquefaction. Mm -hmm.